Hi everyone, welcome to this tutorial which forms part of my audition for the Graphic 45 Design Team 2016 and yes I'm doing it again, I have fun every year trying out for this, it is disappointing when you don't get in but if you don't try it you'll never know and that's why I'm trying again this year because uh, that's what my son told me when I asked him should I audition again, he said mum if you don't audition you'll never know. This canvas was inspired by two particular papers. One of them is Bazaar of Wonders from the Old Curiosity Shop and the other is Stunning from the Couture Collection. And I mixed and matched a couple of papers with those in order to create this canvas. And that is the beauty of Graphic 45. You'll always find papers that will inspire you to do a particular project and you'll always have papers that will mix and match in with those to create that project. And this is what those papers look like all mixed up together. As with all my tutorials, this is all about showing you lots of different techniques, giving you lots of different ideas so that you can either go away and duplicate this project or that you can take some of the elements away with you and create projects of your own. So I really hope that you get lots of inspiration to create gorgeous works of art to either give us a gift or to decorate your home. Working on a 12 by 12 inch box canvas, it's approximately one and a quarter inches deep and I'm going to be using some of these old doilies and um, I found these in my mum's collection of crafting goodies so I don't know how long she's had them but they're definitely antiques and today they're going to be used to create very very pretty texture on a canvas. So I've selected this doily and I'm going to first of all start by removing the centre section of the doily. So I'm going to be using the centre section to create texture on the edges of the canvas um, or on the front of the canvas and I'm going to be using the edge of the doily to create texture on the edges of the box canvas. Now the thing is when you're decorating a canvas like this it really is a good idea to just take some of that design down onto the edges because you'll be able to see those as you walk around once this is hung on the wall. So I'm dividing the canvas in half along its edges and then that's giving me the amount of the doily that I need to isolate so that I can create little elements along the edge of my canvas. So once I've decided how much of that doily I need, I just need to cut two pieces for each side. And we'll also be using two of the centre sections. You end up cutting more of these centre sections out um, in order to get enough to go around the edge of your canvas. But just put those to one side, you'll be able to use those later. And we'll be cutting those in half to work on the edge of our canvas. So I'm literally just folding them in half and then just cutting them down that fold line. And you can see where they're going to sit on the canvas. Next you'll need a gel medium. I'm using one by Faber-Castell. I'm making sure my brush is nice and dry before I put it into that what in essence is a kind of glue or a seal depending on how you're using it. Ignore the fact that my brush still has black paint in it, it won't matter once we get that paint onto the canvas and you can see that I'm just adding the medium to the area where I want to put the doily and then sealing it into place by giving it a top coat with that same matte medium. So I'm putting two at the bottom left hand corner and two at the top right corner. My brush is gradually getting cleaner the more I work. <laughs> and then we're going to also attach two of each of the doilies to each edge of the canvas. So what I'm going to do is put them into place and I am going to fold them over onto the back of the canvas. And the reason I decided to do this was because otherwise I might have lots of little edges um, looking a bit untidy at the base of the canvas so it was just a little bit of a neater way to get these attached and I'm just trimming off those end sections. 
And once you've covered all four sides, let that dry and we're ready to start painting. And we're going to be working with some paints that go with our papers. I'm not going to give you the colours because mine are so ancient, the chances are you can't get hold of them anymore. But you want some colours that go with the papers that you've got. So I've got a white, a light teal, a darker teal, a green and a purple. All that I've picked that look like similar colours that are used in the peacock papers that we're going to be using to create our magnificent peacock. So I'm starting out by adding a base colour to my canvas and I'm doing that with a sort of mushroom and white combo. Now you can see as I add this second layer that the canvas is no longer white. I've already added a layer of this sort of mushroomy colour or off-white cream colour to my canvas and let it dry. Now I'm coming back in with a second coat of the mushroom colour and then I'm also blending in a combination of the other colours that I've picked that go with my papers to create this background. So remember that we're working into wet paint. I'm using a flat brush and I am adding different streaks of colour into that base layer and then blending it up or down depending on which edge of the canvas that I'm working on to create almost like streaks of colour but I'm blending them in quite well to the canvas and that's why you need the wet base layer in order to be able to achieve this look. I'm not trying to go too dark with this uh, but I am trying to get more colour at the bottom of the canvas and a little bit less at the top so the bottom ends up a little bit darker than the top of the canvas and I'm just creating sort of longer streaks at the bottom and shorter streaks at the top. I'm keeping the use of the purple to a minimum and then using hopefully equal amounts of the turquoises, the two, the light and the dark turquoise or teal and the green. Now if things get a little bit heavy you can always add in some of those lighter colours. It almost has a mother of pearl effect once it's finished because of the sort of delicate blending of lots of different colours. You can see the top of my canvas is lighter than the bottom and then we need to work on the edges. So again I'm adding that damp layer of paint in the base colour which is a sort of mushroom tone and then I'm following the same direction of brush strokes that are associated with that side. So the two uh, left and right edges are long strokes and the bottom and top of the canvas are short strokes. So you're kind of imagining just wrapping that technique all the way around your canvas. So again, keeping it slightly darker at the bottom and lighter at the top. So you can see how that design wraps around onto the edges and I'll repeat that on the opposite edge. And then the top and the bottom edges, you're going to use a short stroke and go in the opposite direction. So looking at the top of the canvas you can see the way the direction of the paint. So again adding that bottom layer of the mushroom tone and then this time we're going to be working in a short stroke direction and I'm kind of marrying up the colours that I can see at the top of, or the bottom in this case, of the canvas. So keeping that streaky blend, but just continuing the colour that happens to be in that section of the canvas. So the canvas is completely dry and we're ready to highlight those doilies that we laid down right at the beginning. And I'm going to do that by using my finger and some paint. You need only a very tiny amount of paint onto your fingertip and then you're going to almost dry brush it over those doilies. And this is me experimenting on the edge of my canvas whether to go dark or light with this. And I decided I liked the dark, so I'm drying this off and I'm going to go with the teal colour. So I'm really trying to get as little paint onto my 
finger as possible as I do this and I'm keeping a baby wipe handy to get rid of the areas that I touch that are outside of the doily. So you can see I'm spending a fair amount of time tapping off paint onto the palette um, and then gradually introducing that and brushing it over very very lightly to catch the texture of those doilies. Now you may not be too bothered about the edges of the doilies in which case you don't need to clean up afterwards but I'm just being typically me and I like to keep things although they are random also a little bit neat as well and I want that texture just to be on the doilies. So you can see I'm just lightly brushing over the doilies with my fingertip and the reason that I've tilted my canvas is because I found it a little bit difficult to see exactly where the edges of those doilies were but once you get used to it you'll then know where to concentrate the it's almost like a dry brushing technique but with your fingertip and then once I was happy with the texture created on the doilies I'm just adding a little bit of the same paint and just blending it out on the edge of the canvas this is a bit like inking your canvas if you get a little bit too much paint on just use your baby wipe to smudge that paint out it's just to create a little bit of frame along the edges of the canvas so you're repeating that process on the edge of your canvas highlighting the doilies first and then coming around the edges just to add some definition with the same paint color and I decided that I just wanted to add a little bit more of the green into the mix so I'm just lightly adding little touches here and there along the edges and over the doilies with the sort of leafy green that I have decided to use. Exactly the same principles but just being a little bit more sparing with the colour so that I end up with just a sort of tone or two-tone effect on my textural areas. So I'm using a Pitt pastel pencil which comes from Faber Castell for my sketching and I've stopped using pencils for doing this because you always find that it's difficult to get rid of the lines um, when you're working into paint but with using the chalk pastels they're much much softer and much easier just to use a baby wipe while you're working and get rid of the lines that you don't want when you're sketching unless you're actually using something and drawing around something uh, perhaps you're using a stencil to create your shapes which you you can quite easily do um, you don't always get your drawings right first time and this is much more forgiving than a pencil much softer on your canvas you're not going to create lines um, but you can easily get rid of the sketch marks that you don't want before you begin so I'm drawing out sort of my peacock design. I've got a branch for him to sit on and I'm giving myself the base of the peacock and where he's going to be sat on the canvas. I've put him a little bit to the left hand side because I know that I want my quote to be on the right. So the next few things that I'm going to show you could be used to create all manner of images onto a canvas. So if you break this canvas down into sections, uh, I've just shown you a series of different ways of getting paint onto your canvas and adding texture. And now I'm going to show you how to create an image using these gorgeous Graphic 45 papers. So I sketched out my peacock first, could quite easily be a parrot or some other form of bird or some other kind of animal. And then I'm using some tracing paper again with the um, pastel pencils. And exactly like you used to when you were a kid, you scribble over the reverse of the image, which I've traced from the canvas. Then I'm flipping that over and tracing the outline. This time I'm using a slightly harder pencil to get the shape of my peacock onto my paper. And you can see here, I chose the wrong colour. I can't see the grey, so I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. And uh, that's why it's worth having these pastels in a few different colours because uh, the lighter colours work better on the darker papers and although you can't see it I can see the outline of this peacock enough 
to be able to trace around it so that you can see it and uh, obviously I've only got a small piece of tracing paper so I'm going to do the tail as a separate element so sketching that out and because I haven't got the end of the tail actually on the canvas I'm going to freehand draw the bottom of the tail so I want this to hang off the bottom of the canvas so I'm just taking advantage of using this piece of paper at the diagonal so that I can get as long a tail as possible and then trimming out the shape So a real quick and easy way. I could have started out without a sketch. I could have started out ex with a an image that I printed off of the internet, for instance, and then used that to create my pattern pieces. So I'm only using this one sheet of paper in order to create the bird, and then everything else is going to be decoupaged on top. So remember that you may see some of these chalk lines um, or pastel lines once you stick this into position so it's just as easy to get rid of them now leave the legs where they are and then you'll be able to know where to position your bird so I'm just removing those and then I'm going to add a layer of the gel medium to the back of the paper and stick that into position you also want to add a layer of that gel medium all over your image. This seals the image so it allows us to use other products on top of the paper and also it allows us just to make sure that everything is really well stuck down onto the canvas. You can see where the paper is just a little bit shiny where it's still wet and I also stuck an extra little piece of paper onto the back of the tail and just trimmed that around and you can see I'm just starting to give it some shape whilst that matte medium is still wet. Then you can either allow this to dry naturally or you can just speed the process up with your heat gun. So to create the wings we're going to punch half inch circles from the stunning paper and I'm using my punch upside down so we can position the eye of the feather slightly towards the bottom of the circle. As a guide I use, uh, I punch out approximately 23 circles. And I'm inking the edges of all of these circles, it ends up being a little bit messy on your fingers and I've decided to do that with the Salty Ocean Distress Ink. It just takes off the white edge of the paper because Graphic 45 paper has a white core. Uh, when you're cutting out elements like this it's always nice to get rid of that white edge by inking with whatever colour suits the project you're working on. Because Graphic 45 has a white core, whenever you cut into it, you can see that on the edge. So it's all, always nice to ink your shapes, and I'm doing that with Salty Ocean Distress Ink and inking all of those circles before we attach them to our peacock. And then once you have all your circles inked up, you can start to add them to your bird. So starting at the base of what will become the wing blending into the tail, I'm slightly curving the circles and then overlapping them like fish scales and I'm only adding glue to the very top of the little circle and that way the the fact that we've curved those feathers slightly um, will give more dimension to the piece. So you can see now I've got three little circles in a row and I'm just following the shape of that sketched wing. Zooming in for the detail and you can see how each of these little slightly curved feathers sit one on top of each other like little fish scales to create that gorgeous feather look. Just look at a, uh, an image of a peacock on your phone or your laptop and you'll soon see that um, the kind of look that we're going for with these little feather scales. So the next thing I want to do is give my bird some dimension. It's quite flat at the moment because we've used that patterned paper to give him his gorgeous blue feathers. And I'm using a Faber-Castell pit pen, a big brush marker, I think they're called. <laughs> and one of my favorite things um, to use for adding shadow to papers. So they work really well with the papers that you're using 
on um, projects like these. So you can see I'm just adding a little bit of the ink along the edge of the paper and then blending it out with my finger whilst the ink is still wet. And the reason that I'm able to do this and that it doesn't soak straight into the paper is because we gave it that coating of the matte medium when we were sticking the paper to the canvas. So just keep working until you get the kind of shape that you want. You will see that I did add the shading to the tail but it's not something you need to do because it doesn't show at all once we add the feathers. The next thing that we're going to do is make even more feathers, this time more realistic looking feathers using the Bazaar of Wonders paper and the Wizards of Wonders paper. So the Bazaar of Wonders paper is from the old Curiosity Shop and it has all the feathers printed on it. We're going to fussy cut those and the one with the stamps on the back is from Le Cirque and that's the Wizard of Wonder which is our green paper and this has two um, benefits. One it means that when we cut our feathers out they are green on the back as, to, as opposed to multicoloured and if any of your dimensional feathers um, you can see the back of them they're going to be green rather than multicoloured. So I'm going to be showing you exactly how to do this real nice and close up but I always like to give you a bit of a run through of what we're going to do first. We're going to isolate those feathers and cut them out from the background of the paper that they're printed on and then we're going to turn them into realistic looking feathers. So I used about 20 feathers in total and I did most of this work in front of the TV with a tray on my lap and uh, that really is a good way just to take your time and make sure these end up looking nice and realistic. So the feathers have all been cut out and they have all been inked around the edges and now I'm going to follow the picture and follow the line of the feather and fringe along both sides of each of the feathers. Be careful not to cut through that middle section and try and make those little fringe sections as narrow or thin as you can and that way you'll get a really lovely fluffy feather effect. Once you've done that ink again with your distress ink and then shape your feather along that centre section. You can see how realistic that looks and once you've done that add a little bit of sparkle with some stickles or a sequin to the eye of the feather and put them to one side to dry. As well as feathers you want to create yourself some flowers. So I've got two little flower punches that nestle into one another and uh, you can have a look through your collection to see what you've got to enable you to do something like this. And I made 50 flowers in total but I probably used best part of 40 so it might be worth doing 40 flowers and you are going to have your larger flowers in the blue colour and then the small ones in the purple. Now making 40 flowers is another job for in front of the TV with a cup of coffee and a biscuit and uh, you're going to take each of your petals in turn and you're going to ink the edges. I'm using Salty Ocean for the blue papers and then I'm going to give them a bit of shape just by pushing the end of my ball tool into the centre of the flower. Then using the Seedless Preserves ink you're going to ink all of the little purple flowers and I did ink the back of these just in case they showed but they don't really so you don't have to do that if you don't want to. I'm just putting them onto the paper and just pressing the ink against the back of the flower using my applicator tool. So it really is a bit of a messy job. You get lovely and inky um, with the blue and the purple ink by the time you're finished and then it's time to put them together. So I did all of my petals first and then I started shaping and putting them together. So I'm working on a piece of foam and when I can get my glue to work, <laughs> I'm adding a little dot of glue to the center and then pushing that little purple flower into the center of it and giving them a little cup shape as I join them together. And I'm just making sure that those petals are slightly offset. So it doesn't take an awful lot of time to put them together once you've done all that inking. If you use stickles you don't have to do this little section but uh, I'm sprinkling a tiny little bit of glitter into the centre 
onto the wet dimensional paint. So first the dimensional paint and then a little tiny sprinkle of lilac glitter to bring those flowers to life. Alternatively you could use gems or pearls. So 50 little flowers and 20 feathers later we've got one more job to do before we can put this canvas together. Now we want to create some leaves and I've taken a strip of the feather and green paper, the one that we backed up so that we could make feathers with the uh, green underneath. I've flipped it over and I'm using my craft knife to cut some very thin leaf shapes and I end up with about 60 in total to complete the canvas. Be a bit careful of your fingers, I'm just looking here, <laughs> I'm living dangerously. And once you have a little pile of leaves, then it's time to ink them. Again, another messy job. Three lots of messy inky fingers with this, so you might want to get these all out of the way in one go, and then you can concentrate on making your beautiful canvas at the end. So it's really a relaxing job just to sit and do all of this cutting and inking of the feather, flower and leaf elements ready for your canvas. This time I'm inking in the purple. I deliberately chose that because it just gives it uh, a sort of tonal effect to blend in with some of the other elements on the canvas. So again I'm using the seedless preserves. Everything is nice and dry and we're ready to start sticking things down on to our canvas. You can see I did this over a few days by all the changes of sleeves that you see before you. <laughs> it really is something that you can take your time over and the end result is very glamorous and fabulous just like the peacock itself. So I'm trying to pick the feathers that best suit the shape of the tail. I'm working from the top of the tail down. And you can see I'm only adding a little bit of glue to the top of each of those feathers. And that way I can tuck the next layer of feathers underneath. And I did choose at that point to add one more little circle to bring that wing section to a point. It just looks a little bit nicer that way. And I will be adding flowers as we go to add an another sort of de decorative element to this fabulous tail. So the first layer of feathers was three, now we're moving up to four feathers and so on, so that you cover each time the paper that you've created or the paper tail that you've created as a base to hold all of these feathers into position. You can see now what I meant when I said you didn't really need to ink the edges of the tail. So you can see each time I do a little dry run of the feathers and then I stick them into position. So at this point you would be able to finish your tail but I did run out of feathers and had to make a few more so I'm going to move on to the next section and you'll see me finish those last few feathers off once the stickles are dry. Now, I'm not sure a peacock would actually find itself sitting in a weeping willow tree but that's the kind of effect that I'm going for with this branch that I'm sitting a peacock on. Now I know they do fly so he could quite easily find himself into a <laughs> weeping willow if he was um, in the UK somewhere and uh, I am going to sort of mimic that look of drooping branches only I'm going to add these glamorous flowers so I'm just sort of sketching out with that purple paint roughly where my branches are going to go and there's also going to be some branches coming from the top of the canvas. And then I'm using the paints that I used when I created the canvas to create my branch. Now there's not really much I can tell you about this, I'm not the world's greatest painter so I'm just doing my best to get this to look a little bit wood-like even though it is not wood coloured. <laughs> So I'm following the shape of the branch that I've created and then I'm going to add all sorts of textures in with the other colours of paint. I'm working on the shape first where the branches are going to go and then I'm coming back in to create the texture. And then I'm adding in the outline and shading with the purple and then blending it out again while the paint is still wet. 
And you can always tell when I'm concentrating because in pops that fringe <laughs> to the bottom, the bottom of the screen. And I'm also finishing off the feet of the peacock. And then I'm using a liner brush to add in those dangly branches. And I'm just twirling it down the canvas. I have no idea if this is what a weeping willow actually looks like, but you'll get the idea once this is all finished. So as well as the branches actually coming from the branch that's visible that our peacock is sitting on, I also want some dangling down from the top, so as if he's really sitting in that tree. And I've got a couple on the left and a couple on the right, and I'm making sure that I'm leaving room to add my quote at the end of the canvas, at the end of painting or creating the canvas. Now it was here where I needed a face of a peacock so I just went on trusty old Google and now I'm doing my best to get something that looks actually I think now I'm looking at it a bit like a flamingo <laughs> but I was aiming for peacock. Adding in his fabulous crown at the top and I'm just using a white pit pen to put in a few of the highlights. So I've roughly laid out where the flowers are going to go on the branches and I sort of thought that less was more so you can see that I start to take a few of these off, kind of offset them from one another and then we're going to add in those leaves as we glue all of this down. The little dots of glue underneath the tips of the leaves and I've just curved them up slightly and I'm staggering them down those branches as I add the flowers into position. So literally one side then the other and following the length of those sort of trailing branches. So you'll very quickly add lots of leaves and flowers to your branches and then you're ready to add the quote onto your canvas. You don't have to use the quote that I'm using, I just thought it was a fun um, little quote that uh, you could use but you can use anything you like, something pertinent perhaps to you or the person that you're going to give this to. I've printed it out and sized it on my computer and then using the same technique as we did with the tracing paper I've chalked on the back or used the pastel pencil on the back of this uh, little printout and now I'm tracing it with my pen to get the outline onto my canvas. And don't forget you can use your ruler just to make sure that everything's nice and straight. And once this is on there I can either go over this with a pen depending on um, what look you're going for or you can go over it with paint. Now if you're really good with a paintbrush you can paint in this wording, you could stamp the wording or you could draw it with a pen. I'm trying to use a combination of two things. I've got this sort of blender pen that I had uh, from um, Stamping Up that I haven't used for ages and I wondered if the brush tip could be dipped into paint and then you've got a little bit more control of where things are going and it worked a treat. The only thing that you have to remember um, and I'm pretty sure that this would work with other brush tipped pens. Once uh, that pen has had its day you could try this out for yourself but just remember that you really need to give this a good wipe over with a baby wipe once you've finished in order to be able to use this uh, method or this nib again. But I mean if it's a pen that you've finished with it won't really matter if once you've done your lettering that this is ruined at the end of it but it actually I've used this twice now and I've just wiped it down with a baby wipe and it works a treat and you can see I've just got a lot more control it's as if I'm using a pen but I'm getting that lovely paint finish. So this method would work really well for any project that you wanted to add wording to if perhaps your handwriting's not up to it as mine definitely isn't um, you can get a really professional finish by uh, using this transfer method and either by using a brush or a pen as I'm here to trace over the lettering that you have transferred to your project. 
and then I'm just adding a couple of little sparkly sequins to the tops of the crown of the peacock. I don't know if it's called a crown but I'm going to call it that because that's what it looks like and then in the centre of each of those sequins I'm adding some light purple and dark purple teeny tiny gems just to finish it off and I will do the same on the peacock's tail. So I'm using a barbecue skewer to add little tiny dots of glue and then transferring alternate light and then dark little gems on to the centres of each of those what are actually feathers in real life adding a little highlight to the eye of the peacock and you can see I finished off the tail with those feathers once they were dry and I'm just randomly dotting some sequins about the tail to make it even more glamorous and I'm finishing off by adding some more of those little gems to you how much glitter you add to this canvas. Um, I'm going to go another little step further. I've got these beautiful little jewels. They're sprinkles that you get for perhaps wedding tables and things like that and I'm just going to add them to the branches just to add a little bit more bling. So a little dot of glue and then just sitting those little diamonds into, they almost look like little raindrops when they're done onto those branches just for a little bit more glitz and glamour. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you wish me luck as I audition for the Graphic 45 Design Team 2016. So this is I think my fourth year of trying. Last year I got through to the second round so keep your fingers crossed. I'm going to keep everything crossed that I'm lucky this year. If not I've had a ton of fun being inspired by these papers as well as others. So take a look at my blog. The link is down below or on the iCards at the end of this video to see what else their beautiful papers have inspired me to make for this audition. As well as that you can see some photographs at the end of this video where you will see other audition pieces that I've made in previous years. So I hope you enjoy all this Graphic 45 goodness and that you wish me luck as I embark on yet another audition entry. Until next time, thank you for watching. As you can see I love to ring the changes, I love trying different things and I'm inspired by the many different collections that we see come from Graphic 45, always something new to inspire you and I really love how once you've got a collection building lots of things mix and match to bring you whole new looks and whole new inspiration. So as I promised here's the link back to my blog where you can see the full audition piece with the projects that I created for this year's audition as well as a link to my Graphic 45 playlist. Don't forget to wish me luck as I audition once again for the Graphic 45 Design Team 2016. Keeping everything crossed. Good luck everyone.